Hello, you beautiful people. I am here to save you your existence. Not really. I just needed to flex this. Anyways, now that I'm done with second year, I can finally make some really good advice videos about second year, their resources, and how to go about it. So I think I'll be starting a series. The first video being all the resources you need for second year. Further, I'll be making subject-wise videos on how to go about pathology, pharmacology, and microbiology. I'm going to be talking about the most basic, simple resources that you need. Nothing extra, no iPads, nothing. I went through second year with with the absolute basics. One because I'm lazy. Second thing because I feel that's enough. And the lesser the resources, the more I can focus on each one of them. I'll be starting with the subjects first. My favorite subject scored the highest in it, and it's because of this book. This book is my bible and I love it. Honestly, it is big, it is overwhelming, but when you start reading it, you will realize that KDT even though it is big, you need to remember very specific and simpler points from it. For example, let's look at this chapter. Honestly, the page looks big and overwhelming, but I've underlined very specific things. So what happens is when I first read the topic, I try to read the lines above and below the lines that I've underlined, but right before an exam, honestly just reading the underlined lines makes it simpler as compared to reading an entire book where you need to remember every single bit of information. So KDT helped me a lot. I'll tell you how to go about this book and how to learn efficiently from this book in my further videos. But other than KDT, there is Shanbag which I also used for certain topics like general pharmacology, autonomic system, etc. So Shanbag is a concise version of KDT, which in itself is a great book and just one reading of Shanbag can actually make you pass the exam. But again, you're reading for complete knowledge and you're reading not just to pass the exam, but to become a doctor, which is why I'd recommend you to use Shanbag a little wisely and use it only for the topics you find too much in KDT. Along with this, there is this one Chunnu book that a lot of my friends had, which just had the drug classifications, which was uh, honestly very good for revision before exams or even every night before sleeping. If you do one set of drug classification and sleep, that's going to help you a lot in the long run. I will actually link all these books in the description so you can go through them. My second favorite subject, Path. So as you know, you probably heard this name multiple times. It is Robbins. And Robbins is a very extensive and big book. So there are two volumes of it. But it's really fun reading it. And I would say use Robin as your basic resource for pathology. But since pathology is such an extensive subject it makes sense to make notes for path so this is one thing that i did not do really well but um, in case robins gets too much try to make concise notes from robins and go through them instead um, but otherwise this is the standard book and i have only used this other than this i've also used ramdas nayak for a few topics like wbc disorders because they were a little scattered in robins so that again is your personal preference. Uh, although I would say stick to Robbins, if you feel that this is not working for you, you can definitely go for Ramdas Nayak. It's a pretty good book too. And uh, other than this, for Path, I've used a lot of online resources for uh, the for the practical aspect of it. Not only does our practical notebook help, it's also important to go through these images online and try to identify the pathologies. So I would say after every practical class, if you can uh, if you can search up the particular disease and its histology online and try to identify it on your own, that would really help. And obviously for microbiology, I have a book that's almost dying. It's Apurva Shastri and Apurva Shastri is the best you can get for micro. Honestly, it's a very extensive book and I've done it in unnecessary detail. But also it feels nice to do it in that kind of detail. It's micro as you go along the year you'll realize is a good subject. Even though initially you might not prefer it that much. Um, but yeah, for micro I haven't used a singular resource other than this. So I hope. So um, you can find the actual cover of the book online because right now you can just see his face. I don't really think there's anything other than this I would recommend. 
Though I haven't gone through Anant Narayan, I feel that uh, this is more set to the CBME curriculum and would help you better. Apart from this, uh, our college provides really good uh, practical notebooks with a lot of information within it. So those practical notebooks were great resources for us. Um, so I would say pay a lot of attention in practical classes so that they help you for your theory exams too. Now keeping the paraclinical subjects aside, let's go on to clinics. So in second year you start your clinics, obviously. One thing I would say is do not take them lightly. Even though you're in second year, you will have a tendency to skip your postings, skip the clinics. Don't do it. Because Path, Micro and Pharmac, though they're great subjects, the joy of MBBS really comes from postings and you'll get a great exposure to a lot of cases and you will be well ahead of your class if you do your postings right. Which is why for every posting I've gone to, I have made sure that I follow what they say. For example, in surgery posting, they ask us to read Kedas. So I downloaded a PDF copy of Kedas and I read it for whatever topics were taught. Similarly, for medicine, they asked us to do Davidson. I read it. Pediatrics, OP guy, etc, etc. So I would say ask the doctors in your hospital which is the recommended book and try to read whatever they teach you during that posting on the same day itself. It'll take barely half an hour, honestly not more than that also. But it's going to help you a lot in the long run, especially because they're covering a lot of fourth year subjects and third year subjects in second year itself. I know second year is very extensive, but try to do postings well. And um, when it comes to non-core subjects, non-core subjects such as medicine, surgery, OBG, all I did was attend classes, write notes for the classes and read those notes. I did not use any other resources more than this. I did read ready for forensics, but that was completely out of interest. You can choose to just stick to your PPTs or to your lectures and your lecture notes. So those are the main resources that I've used in second year. And something that really aids that is a proper rough notebook for your clinics. One where you have all your cases, all the theory taught in clinics that you will be keeping with you for the next two years, three years. Along with this, have a small notepad too, so that when you're in uh, the OPD or when you're in uh, the OT, you can quickly make some notes. And for the stationery, make sure to carry a pen wherever you go, one singular pen. I love this pen. You know the color color one first of all because you can play with it secondly because um you can color code whatever you're reading you don't need multiple sketches multiple pencils etc you just need one singular pen throughout your second year obviously when you go for a uh, path and micro you might need color pencils h &E pencils as well as pencils sharpener etc but that is only limited to path and micro practicals otherwise you will not find any need of them one pen is enough also maybe grab some sticky notes uh, to make small notes and stick up in your book while you're attending class or while you're studying on your own and finally you will need your medical kit the tape the knee jerk hammer i got caught in the airport multiple times for carrying this in my bag and they're like are you a doctor i'm not i am not a doctor i might become one hopefully but yeah do not carry it in the airport i carried my suturing kit in the airport dude oh, that was that was one major incident in life. Anyways, that's all you need, but not to forget, you need a white coat with a name tag. Second year is one of the most satisfying years when it comes to academics. There's because there's a lot you learn and your knowledge levels in the beginning and after second year is insane. So I would say take it very seriously. It's the year that forms your base. Take it seriously, focus on your academics. And third year, honestly, it depends on what your plans for the future are. Also in second year, you do not need an iPad. An iPad is a great resource. It helps you take notes. It helps you easily watch videos and access eBooks, but it's not a requirement and you do not have to go out of your way to buy one. Yes, get a laptop. And um, if not a laptop, even your phone will work for PDFs of different books that you can't really buy the physical copies of. And for maybe your research work to make documents, etc., you might need a laptop. So that's about it. I figured out second year at the end of second year, and I'm pretty sure the same thing is going to happen in third year. So I'm just passing on all my knowledge to you. Hope you take it. And I'm very excited about my new Attack on Titan outfit that my friend gifted me. It's the beginning of third year. 
it's that typical phase where every newbie feels like every subject is important everything is important so eventually i'll figure out what to prioritize etc etc so i'm a wait until then i'll be writing emily this year so you can expect a lot of content next year about emily so let's go